Good morning everyone and welcome to this Metaphorics webinar for 2016. My name is Pauline Forder and today we will be looking at standard credit control in Microsoft Dynamics 2015 and the creation of reminder letters. In detail we will be covering credit warnings, how we set these up in sales and receivables and the various options that are available to us. We will then look at how we enter a credit limit on the customer card and the features and functionalities of doing that in 2015. I will then be taking you through some examples of those credit warnings dependent on whether the account has exceeded their credit, credit limit, whether they have overdue balances or indeed if they have both of the above. We will then go and have a quick look at the Age Accounts Receivable Report and the various filtering that uh, we can do when running the report, how we can export to Excel and how we can show the report both in a summary and in a detailed layout. We'll also have a look at custom statements and the various filters again that we would need to set when running that process. And then we will go to reminder letters. So we'll look at how the reminders are set up using these things called reminder terms, how the letters within those reminder terms can be generated with the beginning and end text to be shown on the printed document. We will then create the reminders and we'll do that both from creating just one on a single process, i.e. select one customer and generate a reminder just for that customer. And then we will run through how to do it through the batch job. Once we've done that, we'll have a look at those reminders and then we will decide on which ones that we want to issue or which ones we delete and therefore print the reminder we will then go to the customer record itself so that we can actually view the reminder that has been sent. So first of all, we'll have a look at the uh, credit warnings and how we set those up. We can either go through the department route or we can just go and use our search box. So the credit warnings are covered here on the general fast tab. We have some options. We can either show that we don't want any warning to be displayed irrespective of the status of the account. Just when an overdue balance is applicable. Just when a credit limit has been exceeded. Or in this case on our Cronus test database, we're looking and going to be showing both of the warnings. So once this has been set up in our sales and receivables, we then need to make sure that our customers are set up accordingly. And I've just got a, a quick saved view here for some customers that I would like to just uh, go through those various options with you. If, for example, we were to look at new concepts, we can see at the moment that the customer has no credit limit set up and they have quite a large uh, balance. Now, one feature of 2015 and onwards is that when you enter in a credit limit, I appreciate normally you would do this when you're first setting the customer up, but irrespective, when the credit limit is exceeded, then that credit limit will always be shown in red. So it does mean that you can have a quick glance through your customer records and visually see which ones have been uh, have gone over those credit limits. Once the credit limit is increased enough, then that credit limit will always be shown in the standard black print. So with the various options, credit limits, overdue balances, etc., I just want to just run us through a few of those. So for, for example, on 
our customer called Guildford. I'm just going to pop using my ribbons at the top to create a sales invoice. And my customer has automatically come through because indeed I did have uh, my customer was sat on that customer at the particular time. Just put in, oops, it certainly doesn't exist. Okay, so in here we can see that this particular customer has exceeded their credit limit. Now, at this point, it is entirely up to yourselves as an organisation to decide whether you want the user when receiving this message to carry on and record the details or indeed that perhaps they have to then check through with um, the credit controller and in which case you would say no to that and the details will be cancelled. Another option, if we look at um, Fairway, I think, again, not in there. Okay, so again, we're getting the credit limit has been exceeded. Of course, if this customer did have an overdue amount as well, the error message or the warning would actually say that the customer's credit limit has been exceeded and there are overdue payments. But the important thing is that the user is prompted. They can then make the decision as to whether they wish to go ahead and carry out the creation of the document or whether they're going to cancel that. Just remove that. So, once we've got our credit limit checks and our overdue um, warnings out of the way, and we have actually made our postings, we need to obviously um, chase the money from our customers. And we will do that through our standard report now. You may print statements, and we will have a look at that at the moment, or you might just um, work off of your aged accounts receivables report. So we'll just have a look at that report first. And we decide as to how we want the um, invoices, um, the report to be uh, shown. We do it by aged as of. So normally we're looking at the end of the month or perhaps the first day of the new month, entirely up to yourselves how you run this. We have our ageing option, so do we want to show it by due date, by posting date or by document date? And we'll have a look at that, both of those or a couple of those. We then determine what the period length for the ageing is to be in the format of 1M for one month, 6M would be six months, 2W would be two weeks, 1Y would be one year, etc. We can determine whether we want to show the amounts, all the amounts in LCY, local currency or not. And we can determine whether we want to show the details of the uh, debt, whether we want to show the outstanding documents or whether we just want it in summary. I'm just going to choose to do it in summary at the moment. We can then do the heading type. Here we would specify whether it's the date interval, date interval being the 1st to the 31st of the given month, or the number of days, 0 to 30 or 31, dependent on the month itself. You notice that we do have that option to print to Excel, but I will um, do that in a moment. So we'll just have a look at this report first of all haven't ticked the details, so we have it in the summary layout. We have the details at the top as to how we have run the report, aged as of and we're aging by the due date. We have the customer 
number and name, the currency in which the customer is, what the overall balance is, any values that are not due. So this would be invoices that are due for payment after the 31st of January. And then those invoices that are due in this month of January and then the previous months with a total at the end for all those outside of the three aged periods. We have a total in local currency at the bottom and percentage of where the debt lies. However, if we have got foreign or currency uh, customers, then those details are broken open at the bottom here with a total per currency code. So if we just have a look at that report again, but this time I'm going to do the uh, print details and I'll do the preview again. So again, exactly the same as we saw, but this time we're ha actually seeing all the details as in all the outstanding or open transactions against each of our customers. Still, however, with our summary at the bottom against the various currency codes. Last but not least, I'll just show you it going out to Excel. Now, irrespective of whether I actually tick that box or not, the print to Excel option will always do it in the um, detailed format. Okay, on the information fast tab, we have the details of the um, criteria that I used when running the report. The date looks funny there because, of course, we're in a Cronus database, but my system date, my computer date, is indeed the real date today. Okay, and how the um, report has been aged. And then in the data, we can see that we have all the details against the particular customers in terms of their credit memos. Obviously, very useful if you need to share this information with people um, that are outside of New Vision that don't have access. Or indeed, this can be passed through to um, credit controllers to then actually chase money to have uh, all that information to hand. So I will just close that down and my report. And now we'll have a look at uh, the reminders, sorry, statements. So how do we run our statements? Well, you have a link up from your reports menu on your role center, maybe, and if you don't, then you can just use your search box for statements. Envision needs to know which period you're running this for. So at the moment we're in 2017, it being a test database. Do you want to show the overdue entries as a separate entry? And some options in terms of what type of customers you want to include. Include all customers with the ledger entries. So it might be that the uh, entries are open, but they are just because you, um, they're not applied, but the balance might not or might be zero. So. Probably, you possibly wouldn't choose that option, but you'd certainly want to include all customers with a balance. And you can choose to uh, include reversed or unapplied entries as well. You can choose whether to select the uh, aging band, which will appear at the bottom. And dependent on what date you're running the report, you might have just one M in there or one M plus calendar month. That would just mean if you were running it mid-month um, rather than a whole month here, it would uh, put the ageing band in months for you. So if we just have a look at that, oh, and of course we can um, exclude certain customers if we wish to using normal Navision filtering. Although there is this one little filter here, print statements, and it's a yes, no box. And that is because on the customer card, you can select a field that says, 
print statements for your customers so that you can decide just to run the statements for those customers that have that box ticked or if you leave it blank then it will select all of the customers depending on any filtering as per the filtering above. So if I just run that into preview for us. So because I have selected the summering band, I'm seeing that at the bottom. And of course, part of your uh, statement would be to include um, your logo. So I'm sure if you're using statements at the moment, your statements look a little bit more pretty than what these ones do. OK, so once we have set up our customers, we've set them up for credit limits, we have um, posted transactions against them and we have now sent out our statements and we have our uh, report to work from. Of course, all those good things don't necessarily mean that our customers will pay us. So this is where we can turn to the reminders to help us achieve that. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to set up what's called the reminder terms. So again, I'm just going to be a little bit lazy and come to the reminder term. So I'll just click on that link there. And here we are, reminder terms. So the first thing we have to determine is what type of reminders that we might need to send out to our customers. And when I say that, it is, do you have the requirement to send different types of letters dependent on the different type of customer that you have? An obvious choice is between domestic and foreign customers. So if that is the case, indeed, you can set up more than one return reminder uh, terms code. Once you have decided what you're going to call it and give it a description, you can then put in the maximum number of reminders. Now, that figure is not to do with the number of letters necessarily that you send. It is more to do with how many letters in total. And what I mean by that is, for example, if you have set up against any reminder term, a total of three letters that you want to go out to your customer. And we'll be having a look at those in a moment. Letter one would be, hi, sure you've just forgotten, but these remain, uh, these invoices are outstanding. Letter two might be a little bit more, come on, sent your reminder, etc. Letter three might be the final one as far as you're concerned that says, at this point, we're now going to send this through to our legal department. However, what you can do is you can decide in a total way how many letters you're going to send. So in this case, if I were to change that to a total of five and I have three letters that I've set up, what will happen is as you're running the reminders, it will print first of all reminder one, then reminder two, then reminder three, and then after that, to a total of, in this case, a total of five letters, it will then send that last reminder letter, in this case, a further two times. In all honesty, I think most of us would leave that just at zero so that it will, the vision will send the number of reminder letters and no more. Anyway, you have the freedom to use that if you wish. You also have the possibility of posting interest. Again, most of our customers say that they won't use that capability because what will Nivision will actually do is if you choose to tick the box and post additional fees, for example, then it will actually generate what is it, for all intents and purposes, a charge invoice to the customer account. And we know pretty much that customers might eventually pay us exactly what they owe us, but they won't um, certainly pay us those just additional charges. And therefore, we would normally recommend 
don't actually post additional charges, just put it as a warning on the letter and it, that might well um, solve the, the situation. Okay, the other thing that we can do is we can actually add the minimum amount, so the minimum value of outstanding invoices that has to be there before a reminder letter is generated. So for example, you might say that you wouldn't send a reminder out to any customers where the outstanding balance is, no, is less than, for example, £500 or something. I'm going to leave all of those uh, blank at the moment and now what I want to do is I want to go in on my actions uh, ribbon at the top and select the levels. For levels you can read letters. So here are my three letters, one, two and three. And within here I have to tell Nivision at what point in time do I want to generate the reminder letter? You've got a couple of options and a combination of those. You can have, you can use something called a grace period or you can use a day, um, due date calculation or, as I say, a combination of the two. I would personally not try to make it too complicated to start off. Do it simply and then add additional levels if you need to um, because dates can be very tricky things. So in our little simple example here we have decided that we're using the grace period and what that means is five days after the due date on the invoice Navision when you rent, run the reminders if five days have passed that due date Navision will generate a reminder for the customer. Likewise, we've said on letter number two, at this point we've actually put one month. I don't really agree with that. I would think you're more likely, if you're going to leave it a month, then you really give your customer too much time, but it's up to you. So here I've said on letter two, after five days of the due date, and this would be of the due date from the reminder letter, and that will come when we actually run the reminders. So when the reminder letter has gone out, five days after that, if we still haven't heard anything from the customer, we'll send out letter number two. And again, five days after that, if the customer hasn't paid, then we will send out letter number three. Calculate interest, as I say, I personally wouldn't want to do that, but you can. However, what you can do is you can put in additional fees without ticking the box so that the fee will show on the reminder letter itself, but that uh, charge invoice will not be generated. So once we have set up the letters, and any fees that we want to apply, then we have to go in and tell Navision how we want the letter to be formatted, what text that we might want to add to the beginning and the end of our reminder letter. So on letter one, to give you some examples of how you might want to show this, I've got, dear customer, as of, and then I've got this percent one. Now percent one relates to what are called variables. And variables give you the options to pull in information either from the reminders that have been already issued to the customer or information from the customer card so that it will auto-populate and you don't have to populate that information manually when the um, reminder is generated. Now to give you some examples of what these variables are, I'm just going to pop to my little word pad here. So in the case of our reminder one, I've got percent one and percent one says document date. So as from the date that's on the reminder header, it will pull into my text in the body of my re reminder letter that document date. 
Percent two will bring in the due date, percent four remaining amount, and so on and so forth, and percent seven you'll see this uh, additionally on uh, one of our letters when we go through it. So just some options that you can use and it just means as I say that you don't have to go in and manually doctor your reminders. So back to our reminder text. <clears throat> so this is my beginning text and for letter one my ending text is please remit your payment of, and then percent seven, so that total amount within five days of receipt of this letter. Okay, you can put in as many lines as you wish. You can include things like um, an email address so that the um, people receiving your reminder don't have any excuse as to know how to contact you. Letter two. Words can be a little bit more strong, despite our early reminder, this amount still st stays outstanding. And of course, the percent seven will always recalculate the value that is owed. And then we go to our ending, or our last letter. This is reminder number, number eight, which is the reminder letter. In our case, it would be number three. We've now sent your details to our legal team as the blow invoices still remain unpaid. And then in our ending text, you can say anything again as you wish, but it might be fact that you want to make sure that they now correspond, uh, correspond with your legal team. Okay, so we've set up our reminder levels against each of our reminder term codes. So once that has been done, the next thing that we need to do is actually mark our customers so that the reminder letters will be generated for them because by default they won't necessarily be. So if I just go to any of our customers, doesn't matter which one, and go to the edit, and then to our Payments Fast tab. In the Reminder Terms code, we must select whichever set of Reminder Terms that is applicable for this particular customer. If that is not populated, then Reminders will never be generated for our customer. So once we've got our reminder terms set up, our customers are all set up, next thing for us to do is to actually run the reminders themselves. So if you have it on your role center, then obviously you can click there, or if not, just search for it in your search box. And you are presented with a blank screen. If there's anything on there, it means you've already run the process and you haven't uh, processed those reminders. So normally that will be empty. To create a, a reminder for a specific customer, then we can simply go to new. We can select our customer. And then we can ask Navision by using the suggest uh, reminder lines to populate our reminder. Of course, we would be putting in the correct dates, etc., that we want to use for this particular customer. So, suggest the lines, and we are then presented with uh, a dialog box. Do we want to only include entries with overdue amounts? Yes or no? Mm -mm. It's entirely up to you, but possibly. It would be only the overdue amounts. And do you want to include any uh, invoices that you mar might have marked as being on hold? On hold is normally used when you're in dispute with your customer. So it might be um, that you would want to exclude those because you're already dealing with them in another way. If not, you would just tick the box. We would then just say, okay, and if I just 
make that full screen. We can see that in this case, if you look at the reminder level that's in our header, this customer has already had a reminder level one. And if I just minimize that so you can see that a bit clearer, you can see that the lines of the reminder. Now, I can tell from this screen that this particular customer is a foreign, using the foreign uh, reminder terms, because this isn't the text that we were looking at a little bit earlier. But it shows the customer the details of the entries that were in the previous reminder, i.e. because this is now reminder two for these particular entries, whereas this last line here is actually now, that invoice has now become due for payment when I'm running the reminders. There's our additional fee that's come in. If you remember, we didn't tick the post box, so although it's showing on our reminder, this is not um, an invoice, it is purely reminder letter. So we're just warning the customer that we are going to put charge that 10% additional, but as I say, we won't actually post the entries onto the customer account. Okay, so I'm just going to delete that one because I'm going to pick him up again in the um, batch job. And the batch job is the create reminders routine here. So we just click on create reminders. Pop in our posting date. So this is the date at which you want to um, send out the reminder. So any invoice is due for payment up to and including that date. Again, you have the only entries with overdue amounts and the include entries on hold if you wish to. And then you've got your use uh, header level, which is about making sure that you tell the uh, customer which uh, reminder level particular invoices <coughs> are uh, being requested to be paid. So we'll say OK to that. That was jolly quick, wasn't it? Now, of course, dependent on how many customers you have set up on the reminder terms, it will depend on how many are displayed here. And of course, it's only going to be listed here, those customers that have outstanding uh, invoices up to and including the date that you have specified. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at the format of some of these uh, reminders. So in this case we have for this particular customer this is their reminder level number one. It is a domestic customer because here's our dear customer as of and the date from the reminder here. These particular invoices are outstanding and the reminder level here and the text as we saw in our beginning and end text. If we go on to the next one, here's one of our uh, foreign reminders again. Okay, and this was our Jan John Haddock that we looked at earlier. We have another foreign one there. And again, it's showing us that we have our reminder number one, and we have that additional fee coming through as well. And so on through all of our reminders. Now, these are working documents, so you can change anything that, um, I mean, you wouldn't want to change the uh, invoice amount, but you can remove um, any details or add additional text, anything you want to. It is purely a working document. So once we have done that, we can decide as to whether we want to send all of our uh, reminders out to our customers. And to do that, it's actually called issue. <coughs> excuse me, issuing. And again, we can issue on a complete blanket all of our reminders or just on individuals. Once you have got your list uh, created, if you know for sure that you don't want to send a reminder, then I would just simply 
delete that entry if you weren't going to send it out to that particular customer this time. It will always be picked up on the next reminder run. So from our list, or indeed from the card view, we just simply go to the issue button at the top. And it's saying, do you want to print and or email? So dependent on what functionality you have in your uh, database, then you can choose print or not. I'm going to leave it as not print because I won't be able to show you that. However, what I might want to do, depending on when I've run these particular reminder letters, I might want to change the uh, posting date and I can do that simply by just ticking the box and then selecting another date to be used. And you'll notice that in the reminder uh, fast tab on my dialog box here, it's actually filtering on the remittance reminder uh, that my cursor is placed on at the moment. So if that was the case, I would just say OK. And now that particular reminder has now been issued. However, if I want to issue the, all of my reminders, and I will do that, I would go back to my uh, issue icon. Again, decide on my options in terms of printing email and whether I'm going to replace the uh, posting date or not. And then this time, just simply remove that filter of the remittance number and say OK, and now my remittances have now all been issued and emailed or hard copy printed, dependent on my selection. So if we now go and have a look at our customer, so if I, for example, show, go to um, John, John Haddock Insurance, I can either choose to open up the customer card if I wish, or from my home ribbon, I have a link here under the document section for issued documents. And I'm going to be selecting the issued reminders. And here I can see that for this customer, I have got two reminders. So if I view my first one, so this was the first reminder that went out. It's reminder level number one for those two particular um, invoices. Whereas my number two, which is the one that I have just generated, then it's showing me my level reminder two, and there's the two level one reminders, and then that last but not least um, new reminder because of the date that we now have used when running the reminders. In terms of what the customer will receive in terms of the um, email or the printed version, and of course this would be um, your logo, etc., uh, would be added to this particular screen if you so wished it to be. But it shows all the details of the uh, reminder that has gone out to the customer. So we have now successfully run our reminders, and now it will just come to the next time to actually then go back and run the reminders again. Now, it is important that you do run your reminders on a regular basis, uh, because otherwise you're not going to keep up with, um, or you're not going to be informing your customers of, of where you are. And a regular basis, I would have thought, would have been at least on a, um, a weekly basis, because of course, all your customers have different payment terms and all invoices have different due dates, so you need to keep on top of it quite regularly. So, we've come to the end of today's session, and we have gone through how we set up our credit warnings.
on our sales and receivable setup and chosen whether we want to show all the credit warnings or perhaps just one or the other. We've seen how we select the credit limit on the customer card and when a customer exceeds his credit limit, when you view a customer card, it will be shown in red for you. We've had a quick look at the types of warnings that you get and the fact that it is a process within your organisation to decide whether once a user receives that uh, warning as to whether they progress the uh, order or the invoice or not. We've had a look at the Aged Accounts Receivables report and the filtering and how we can export to Excel. And um, We've run the customer statements and looked at the filters and selections required to do that. We've set up our reminder terms and associated our reminder letters with their beginning and end texts. And we've run the reminders both in single mode and in batch mode. And once we've run those reminders, we've seen how we can determine which reminders we send out by the issue process.